When the interstate system was founded in 1956, there was an original map created, sending interstates to all the most important routes between large American cities. Every highway served a purpose to the United States, which is why when I found Interstate 180 in Illinois, I was a little confused. See, this is a 13 mile long interstate spur route, stretching from I-80 near Princeton down to the small town of Hennepin. Instantly, I was confused why this spur route is a thing, and why it went basically nowhere. But as any normal human would realize, there is pretty obviously something going on down in Hennepin that makes it important. So I did a quick Google search, which showed me that there is way more to this interstate than meets the eye. So today I'm going to tell you about the U.S. interstate that goes nowhere. Before that though, I just want to quickly ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. I make content just like this, so if you're interested in U.S. geography, I highly recommend subscribing. I've been getting a lot of views recently, so about 95% of the people watching this video aren't subscribed. So if you wouldn't mind changing that, it would be really appreciated. So let's go back to the basics and talk about this interstate at surface level. It comes out of Interstate 80 in the north central region of the state of Illinois, just under 100 miles outside of downtown Chicago. It then makes its way south, having two interchanges along the way before it curves east and makes its way over the Illinois. River. It then meets Hennepin and ends at a simple diamond interchange. It holds 1,900 to 3,600 vehicles per day, making it by far the least used interstate in the country, with only one-tenth the daily drivers of the second place spot. Now let's talk about the history of this interstate. It was completed in 1969 to continue I-80 to the newly opened Jones and Laughlin steel plant in Hennepin. Now here's the kicker. It was criticized by federal auditors who claimed it was a political favor and was being put in front of other important interstate requests. Apparently in the 1960s, Illinois had a large amount of power in the House and Senate, getting basically whatever they wanted from the government. So when the former representative and current senator, who just so happened to reside near Hennepin, asked for a spur route down to the new steel plant, the government was quite interested and making it. And as quick as that, it was being built. You may think I'm done here though, but it gets even better. Remember how the interstate was completed in 1969? Well, just a few years after that in 1973, the Jones and Lachlan steel plant located there closed down. This was a whole roller coaster of emotions for me when reading stuff for this video. I mean, you really can't make it up. The whole purpose for I-180 was closed down just four years after the highway was finished. Now, in all fairness, the steel plant was reopened in 2002, but as far as I can tell, it didn't really do much for the traffic on I-180. Which makes sense because steel is just not in the same place it was in the 70s. So for 44 of the 48 years I-180 has been a thing, there's really been no use for it at all. But since it's an interstate, the Illinois Department of Transportation has to continue to pay upkeep for it, which is karma at its finest. And even at that, they aren't doing very good. And looking at it on Street View is crazy. Look at this picture I'm showing you right now. You can see that there are cracks everywhere and it's by far the worst condition of any interstate in the country. As well as that, it's almost eerie how there's pretty much no cars driving on the road. Besides the odd truck coming from the steel plants in the Hennepin area. I can imagine driving on this road would be really strange and even a little bit creepy at times. Now obviously nothing can justify this absolute joke of an interstate, but apparently it's a very pretty drive, so if you want to just explore and you're in the area, it does seem quite cool. It also seems like a really good place for new drivers to practice highway driving, as long as they're okay with the constant bumps and potholes. Now there are a few more things I want to talk about regarding I-180. I want to express my concern for the Gudman Jessen Memorial Bridge used to cross the Illinois River just outside of Hennepin. First of all, I feel bad for poor Gudman. Sure, barely anything comes up when I search him on Google, and all that I can find is that he was a Danish immigrant who lived with his family in Hennepin. But does anyone really deserve to have this dump of a bridge named after them? But second of all, there's no way this bridge is up to current safety standards. As far as I know, it hasn't been redone since 1969 when the interstate was founded, and it really doesn't look like it's had the proper upkeep needed for such a large bridge. Now, on the bright side, if it did collapse, in all likelihood, nobody would be on it. Plus, it would be the the absolute icing on the cake for this story. Another thing I wanted to talk about is the Illinois DOT report showing the justification system for the interstate highway building. If you run I-180 through that system, it fails miserably. And only one interstate is worse, I-172, an interstate that just so happens to also be in Illinois connecting the city of Quincy to I-72. I would assume that I-172 is considered worse because Quincy is already only 10 miles off the interstate, and it really didn't warrant a full freeway. Something like a four-lane state highway would have done the trick. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is regarding the striking down of I-180 and turning it into a state highway. Apparently, it's very unlikely that this would ever happen because it crosses over a federal waterway, which makes it very hard to strike down. This is a problem in a lot of places that pass over federal waterways, and even though it doesn't make any sense, the rules are there, and it would be very difficult to change. But that's that's all I have to say about this extremely interesting interstate. I don't know that we'll ever find any geography quirks that match this one. It really feels like peak craziness. Thanks for watching.